record. Right, okay, I think we're recording. Brilliant. Okay. Right, okay, everyone, um, I thought I'd do a video today um, just to first of all introduce you all to John, who's going to be joining me on the run, um, as mental as that sounds. Uh, uh, I will say now, John is probably the first person that kind of um, I told about the run properly and came back to me with, uh, yeah, great, let's do it, I'm in, and left me to feel terrified for <laughs> taking on well, I mean, I've got to actually do this now um and John has kindly from the very beginning supported me throughout all of this on training runs helped me with my nutrition and my weight and set me some goals and everything else and quite frankly I wouldn't be doing this without him to be perfectly honest because I'd still be talking about it so um say hello there he is hello how are we all doing <laughs> I'm John we were going to meet face to face and do this um but snow essentially uh as stomachs that somewhat um because i drove up to earlier on there's not the any north fit or anything is there zero at six this morning it was quite covered but then uh it soon uh melted into in in uh in, into the background somewhere it's gone all yeah. gone yeah it, with us it's literally it's like that it's it looks nice but you know practicalities it's just not pretty awful. awful and now we've got to contemplate possibly doing this run in the snow in the snow so I did buy some new layers yesterday from Amazon, like legged ones. I don't want to say leggings. They are leggings. <laughs> uh, some leggings and some uh, long sleeve tops and stuff like that, just in case. I don't I'm particularly like running in them. But... 1950s tennis rackets under your shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> be... Do you know my first tennis racket was wooden, believe it or not? I did you want a frame for it to keep it in shape? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was my mum's. Yeah, that was my first one. Just remember that. Uh, I think it was a guitar then for a while. And so I got a real one. Anyway, that aside. Uh, so, right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing um, and also how we've got to this stage. So if you want to talk me through, John Kindly, when I first started this, did my stats and things for me. And I'll be honest, I thought I was in pretty good shape. Um, I thought I was somewhat svelte, you know, a bit of muscle tone, looking good. Did my stats, look back at the photos now. And to be honest with you, I was a bit fat um i think it's the best way i can describe it and so john did everything for me and then gave me a bag of goodies to help me start the journey to get to where i am today so do you want to just talk us through that and, yeah, and everything yeah and where i was yeah so i've been uh, working as a, a nutrition guide i guess for five years now um and the, the previous five years i'd spent um putting a lot of willpower into various sports uh, kettlebell lifting indoor rowing running things like that um and um my now wife uh, approached me in the gym uh, where i spent a lot of time three pt sessions a week lots of running lots of uh, classes and she said that i looked nothing like the amount of effort i was spending there uh, all the money um and i had a lot of willpower so i had a lot to give to exercise and getting into shape but i didn't have any knowledge uh, as it transpired of how to eat properly uh, how to fuel myself um and i started to study that um quite interestingly um and i became aware of how to manage my uh, body fat percentage my, my stats how to increase my hydration levels um, and how to be fit for purpose, really. And my purpose became seeing what my body was capable of. Um, at that time, I was 38 years old. I'm now 43. And I've gone from struggling through lots of half marathons and one marathon back in 2015 to finding kind of a way to create a physical version of myself where I could technically run forever if I was fueled right uh, give or take things that are out of my control like injuries and, um, and illnesses and such like um, and I've now applied that to other people so my job is to help people to be fit for purpose whatever their purpose is for some people that their purpose is being a, a functional grandparent uh, being able to get up off the ground or upstairs or out of a car um, being able to just get through the day being a parent being a person at work um, being any kind of human being with responsibilities and um, and uh, hobbies, for some people that's running a, a park run in a certain time or running a 10K or uh, moving their body from A to B. And most of us make that really difficult by not understanding how to, um, how to eat, how to fuel ourselves. And one of the things, the differences between you and I around about the time where we met was probably around about um, 16 to 20 kilograms of mass that you were carrying that I wasn't carrying. And we started to compare running times mm. and effort required. 
Um, one of the stats that I found fascinating from when I did my London marathon, which took me just over four hours, was that I'd had to burn 4,000 calories to run that distance in that time. The guy that won it that year in just over two hours only burned 1,300 calories of energy. Um, so way more efficient, easier for him to run twice as fast as me and to, to be on the news. My son, who was seven at the time, when I finished the marathon, said, um, Daddy, how come all of those uh, skinny black guys were so much faster than you, um, <laughs> rather than well done? <laughs> <laughs> Honest, their children of, yeah, and, and and he was right because the guys at the front were way more efficient than me. So um, that that interests me. Uh, the physics of what we're trying to achieve or what we will achieve mm -hmm. running 180 miles in four days tells me that if we can get our body fat percentages down, mine's at around 14%. Michael's got his down to just over 20%. Yeah. And we're getting rid of body material that is cumbersome. A bit like when you strip out a rally car, you take some of the seats out you don't need and some of the extra weight. That's what we've been doing over this period of time. So stripping down body material that is excess for us for this kind of challenge. So what that does is reduce the risk of um, injury, knee, ankle, hip injuries, reduces the risk of getting tired too quickly. Um, the other factor that we need to get 180 miles is willpower. Mm -hmm. Yours is longer than mine because your purpose in doing this run is bigger um so that we need to kind of find a way of matching that and then how do we fuel ourselves before during and after the runs the training runs as well as the run itself um so some of the products that i've helped uh, michael to um to get into his life are the products to give us the um the right kind of nutrition prior to a run so things like vitamins minerals uh, phytonutrients uh, antioxidants uh, so a little bit of caffeine um and just making sure we've got the right balance of protein carbs and fats and then during the run, we need to keep a constant drip feed of carbohydrate energy, as well as a little bit of easy access protein, um, some healthy fats, but lots of vitamins along the way as well. Lots of water, uh, replacement of salts, um, minerals. And then afterwards, we need something coming in that can quite quickly repair us. Um, again, easily digestible proteins. We tend to use soy-based proteins, uh, vegan-based proteins, uh, carbohydrates uh, on the lower end of the glycemic index, uh, fructose, glucose, things like that. Um, and again, lots of vitamins and nutrients that we wouldn't normally put into our body. Um, we've got about 37 trillion cells in the body, and we need around about 114 nutrients on a daily basis, ideally. Wow. Most of us survive uh, by having very few of them. So we tend to get through life surviving. We need to thrive because we're putting our bodies through more pressure on, under kind of uh, more stress. So we need as many of them as possible. And uh, this thing behind me is important because we're not doing this with extreme methods. We're not cutting out carbohydrates no. or over exercising we're finding balance so that we don't put excess stress on our bodies we're not risking our heart we're not risking our joints we're not risking our mental health we're becoming um a master of the the, the destination that we're trying to achieve running lots of distance and and we, we had a good go at a 40 mile run didn't we um yeah yeah Day and we fueled ourselves before and during and afterwards adequately and and and, and it it wasn't easy but it was it was manageable it was fun yeah. and what got me was the next day i got up and like carried sam's bike to school for him and like you yeah. know and, and and i felt fine like you know it was a little it felt like a little bit like i'd done leg day at the gym you know yeah it's the tiniest bit sore because obviously i'd gone further than i'd you know gone before but i couldn't believe like i just I'm, I'm i'm fine like you know if i had to go out that day and run again i could have done you know yeah. and, I, and I, I just think that is entirely down to we did we fueled ourselves properly whilst we were running we took breaks when we needed to you know albeit for five minutes or something but we didn't you know um uh kind of like just do 20 mile 30 or 40 miles without stop we took breaks and then those breaks we hydrated properly um yeah. we we ate we you know prepared ourselves for the next bit and at the end we did the same thing again you know we finished we we had our drinks and everything else which we'll talk about in a moment and decent dinner good night's sleep woke up the next day and you know okay don't get me wrong if the next day you know, we did we did 40 and then the day after that we did 60 and then the day after that we did another 
you know, 20 or 30 or whatever it is we've got planned for the last day, I can't imagine I'm going to feel great waking up every one of those mornings, <laughs> but I feel a heck of a lot better than I did if I hadn't done what I needed to do to get to this point. And that I'll be forever grateful for you because otherwise I'd be doing this on my own with just cans of Red Bull thrown over me, <laughs> like, you know. Um, um, you know, because, because you've got such a strong purpose in finishing this, you potentially put your own life at risk, you know, by doing something to fundraise for a life. Um, you could potentially be putting your own life at risk and particularly your, your physical kind of um, status in terms of joints and muscles and tendons and bones even. Um, if we if we got the prep for this wrong, then by the end of day two, you might find yourself either in hospital or having to stop because yeah. we, we had um, adequately. And yeah, of course, it's going to be uh, challenging it's going to be difficult because we don't do this every day you know we're not people who are running 40 to 60 miles day in day out but we've done some training which is more than just running as far as you can as many times as you can um, it's all about kind of running at the right speeds and the right paces and getting your body composition right and fueling yourself right and and we're, we're in a good place for it we're in a really good place for this yeah 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 i mean it's uh, hydration as well was a major factor for me i wasn't drinking enough water you know and no. i still now and when i did um the 30 miles on the sunday and which was a disastrous event but i you know i did it um even then i've got to remind myself to drink whilst i'm running because if i don't if i get to wait till i get to, till i get thirsty that's wrong too it's too late yeah. you know i'm already depleted so just trying to remember to keep drinking but one yeah. of the things that um piece of advice john gave me early on was to drink four liters of water a day which is here all right yeah a, I've never had such a close relationship with my toilet, I'm weeing like literally every hour. Yeah. Um, B, but it'll make you feel better. It really yeah. does. Like your skin and everything is just easier if you're properly hydrated. It, it just, it sounds silly, but the amount of people that don't actually drink water on a day in, day out basis. And then you chuck all those vitamins on top. You know, um, the uh, I think someone's hoovering in the office next week. Sorry if you can hear that. Um, you talk about those vitamins and things on top. The the results I found were within a couple of days. I just it just started to feel better, you know, yeah. looser and wasn't so sore. And it sounds silly. It wasn't as miserable, <laughs> you know, because I think what a lot of people don't realize is if you get your nutrition wrong, even if it's day to day life, it can affect it affects you you become quite lethargic and you become quite down you can become because your body is just crying out for these things that you're not giving it and it makes you feel like you've really got a lack of energy and you try and replace that with other things and it just makes you feel really miserable and yes you know i've met a few people now that you've helped and they've all got the same thing they're all just I mean, especially Rick he's just he's full of life that guy he's a joy to be around he's just he's absolutely fantastic and to see what you've done to help him and his life turn around is just incredible you know yeah. he's um i saw a picture of him sorry i was going to say simple stuff that we just don't learn growing up you know you learn yeah. how to parents you pick up your habits and then you, you sort of apply eating to your emotional state or time that you've got available to quickly eat something on the go and suddenly you, you find that those principles that when you're a newborn baby are so important nutrients and timings and looking after a baby because they're so delicate somewhere along the way we've become so robust um or, or immune to the impact of overeating carbohydrates not getting the right protein um yeah, compromising on quality of food and not really i didn't believe in vitamins to be honest before I thought it was something to for shops like um to to sell all these different bottles they're so complicated mm -hmm. so many different things but when you start to i suppose invest in your own physical pension plan then you know that we, other than the things that you can't um, forecast for, you're going to be as functional as possible for as long as possible. Um, it's the best place to be. It's the um, it's, yeah. it's the great. Place. Yeah, vitamins for me was what Hulk Hogan told me to have in the eighties. <laughs> Save your prayers, eat my vitamins. <laughs> it was the last one that he said. Um, but I think because uh, it was not long after we met a couple of years ago, John said something to me that is that has just kind of resonated resonated with me and. And I've talked to him about it before, but he said, I want to be um, an on shoulders granddad. And that, that for me was my, was my motivation for it. I want to be that kind of granddad that can play with the grandkids and stuff like that. 
and just that little motivation it's, it's all you know it's it's made me a, a better dad as well because i'm out playing with my kids more so i've got more energy and you know yeah. things like that like you know you've got snow days like yesterday you know building snowmen with the kids in the park and put an idler on a sled which you know would have been hard work was hard work to be honest even now you know but it would have been a lot harder work um you know six months ago or a year ago whenever it was because we actually started this journey believe it or not back in was it june last yeah, year yeah. june last yeah. year um it's not been without its problems this really is it because i started off like a bull out of a gate and some of you will know and then unfortunately it was an ankle incident and then there was another ankle incident um and then there was a bit of christmas thrown in and <laughs> <laughs> things like that and feeling sorry for myself essentially um I think for, for some of it and I, I did put a little bit of weight back on um but again you know these things happen it's part of the story and I think when the reason I'm saying that is if you are somebody that's on a journey or about to embark on a journey if that happens don't beat yourself up or it just acknowledge it and then get back on track and say right slipped a bit there back on track now because the goal is is still the same you know and you know we're talking through some of the products and things that um that we've had is you know the, the, the vitamins oh, i can say vitamins i'm not like, watching too much youtube with the kids vitamins <laughs> um you know the, the the vitamins um the aloe vera juice the um this rebuild endurance drink right which if anybody's interested in any kind of endurance activity forget what it does to your body you mix it with vanilla flavored oat milk right? And it's like a bowl of ice cream that you've mushed up when you're a kid and got that gloop. And then I'd say, so the best thing in the world, this stuff is just, I could drink it all day. I had one. I'm not going to lie. I had one day for yesterday and I, I had even exercised. I just, I had it for pudding, right? I'm not even lying. <laughs> I just had like, because I'm trying to like smaller portions and more often and stuff like that. And this was the problem for me is I'm a big portion person. Like I like big dinners, you know, and then couldn't figure out why I wasn't sleeping properly and why I was tired all the time. And that's, that was why. Um, but I needed something sweet and I didn't want like chocolate or something like that. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to want to rebuild shakes. <laughs> I want those energy shakes, uh, one of those uh, endurance shakes. And it made me feel great. <laughs> I, felt, I, felt, I felt amazing afterwards. Like, and obviously my body needed it anyway, but you know, some of the products that you've got, you, you don't always have to go for the ice cream that's in the freezer or the chocolate bar in the fridge and stuff like that. There's so many alternatives out there that can give you that same sort of little sort of kick that you get from it. Yeah. But the healthier version. I mean, the Achieve Bars. Yeah, they're, they're incredible. That's I mean, they, they, these are products, really. The, the, the science of balance and, and getting things right for your body is all about managing macronutrients, getting the micronutrients right, water, things like that, which can be done with... Uh, with whole foods it can be done with things readily available in the supermarkets but it takes discipline and motivation and time and most people don't have those things in abundance um that we, we use the herbal life products because they've done that for us you know they've created uh, easy access um high nutritious products for low calorie cost so you put in a, a concentrated burst of things into your body that your body can actually make use of it doesn't have to break it down and get rid of it like a lot of the food we eat um so it's useful to us it makes it easier to have that high nutrition low empty calorie kind of balance but you, yes you're in a calorie deficit most of the time but your nutrition is in abundance so that your cells are getting what they need to, to do all the, the various processes um, and and they're, they're fantastic because they're, they're making you fit for purpose. They're making your body uh, able to function for whatever, however you live your life. And you don't have to live on supplements, if you like. You don't have to live on um, replacements. But having them scattered throughout your day is a strategic way to get the whole thing right. And then you can live a life. You can live a life that's sustainable for yourself. You don't have to be very, very disciplined to do that. Um, that that works well for for most people. Then, mm. yeah. I mean, if I I, mean, I look at my dad, unfortunately, I mean, he um, was very much sort of he he'd come home from work and he'd have two or three peanut butter sandwiches, and then he'd have a big pack of digestives at seven o'clock at night and all this sort of stuff. And he always had a belly growing up, you know. And he's quite a young. I mean, he's twenty three, I think, when I was born um so but my dad like when he was in his 30s I was 
assume that's just what you looked like when you got to your thirties, because that's what I grew up with. You know, he had and most of my other, my friends' dads had the same thing. You know, um, and he carried on with his lifestyle, and then it caught up to him when he was fifty six. He had five heart attacks. You know, and two of them killed him. Lucky he was in hospital at the time they brought him back. And then he had to have a quadruple bypass because his his his, his nutrition and everything else was so poor. You know, don't get wrong. I'm not saying anything about mum's cooking, right? If you're listening, mum, it's like, you know, um, oh, so our free end is going in 10 minutes, hang on. Um, it was nothing to do with that, but it was just about what he um, was putting in as well. You know, on top of that, like just sitting down, his routine was he'd go down to the shop at half six and he'd buy a big pack of biscuits and he'd sit there and he'd eat them, you know, and then he would have coffee and, and stuff like that to keep himself going. And and if I'm susceptible to that, that's not happening to me. Do you see what I mean? Like that that's part of my motivation as well. I said not, and I love my dad, he's an amazing human being and I wouldn't change him for the world, but I don't want to end up like that at that age. You know, even when that happened, I was 38, I think, something like that. Anyway, and I was thinking to myself, blimey, like, you know, yeah, that's so far away. But I'm 43 now. Like, it's not that far away. You know, it's it's yeah, I don't want to be that person in my 50s and finding this out now and listening to you and and everything, you know, the products and everything else that come on it. But it's, just, it's the advice as well, the things that I don't think about or what I found online is everything is conflicting. Everybody's got a you know, mm-hmm. got, and, and most of the time is it's you've got to look at nutrition and deficits and things like that. You know, it's I've tried, I mean, I've we talked about so I've tried everything. Fasting, apple cider vinegar, chicken and broccoli, you know, <laughs> uh, all the, the replacement drinks and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. It's just and none of it's worked because I couldn't sustain it because I'd just yeah. be like, I'd go, yay. And I'm like, oh, do you know what? I've lost a stone. I'm going to have a massive Chinese takeaway Saturday, <laughs> roasted, and then I, I, I'd eventually come off wagon and put it all back on again. Whereas I find with this, it's just, it's so, because it's quite, um, it's not intrusive. I think yeah. that's probably a good way to describe it. It's not intrusive, is it? It's not um, a massive change to what you're doing or, no. or anything like that. It's just what you're actually eating. And what I found was, is I didn't need to binge later on at the day. Because my problem is, with a lot of people, is I was under the impression that calories after 8.30 didn't count. <laughs> it turns out that they do. Oh, um, when you... oh. Yeah, yeah, that, that little scoop of Nutella, just as you're doing the washing up or something like that, that actually counts, believe it or not, of the unsanctioned cold meats from the fridge. Makes a difference. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's... it's. So let's talk, though, so we've got about 10 minutes, well, we've got seven and a half minutes left unless I upgrade, which I might do while you're talking now. Talk about what we're going to take with us on the run. Yeah, so what we'll be taking with us, we, we want to start off in the morning with, uh, with, with well, I'll, I'll be using the Herbal Life um, breakfast shakes, but I'll be adding into that some uh, oats for extra carbohydrates and maybe a bit of banana. Um, we'll be having, um, I'll have an aloe drink in the morning, which just helps to keep your digestive system healthy so you can absorb the nutrients uh, and a herbal beverage with some extra caffeine in. Um, we have a product called Lift Off that we use for that. And that's like a pre-workout really. So that just gets our kind of, gets us ready, gets the starter motor going so that we're good to go. Um, as we're running along, we've got a mixture of water with um, with a, a, a powder called CR7, oh, which yeah, was... Stuff. To, um, with the with the support from Cristiano Ronaldo, but it's mainly to give you um, sustained energy for, say, a football match or a long run for an endurance event, so that you've still got access to energy further down the line. Fructose, glucose, particularly easy to absorb uh, carbohydrates, um, and there's also some um, some minerals and salts in there as well to replace that as we're sweating, as we're running, and things. I call my Popeye uh, juice because, like, yeah. at the bottom of an incline, if you six of that, you're just like you're off. It's great. The hell again and then mm-hmm. prologue that's another product that's got carbohydrates and a little bit of protein in as well so it's kind of a liquid meal on the go so we don't get to that point where we need a big intake of food and a big rest and um, we want to keep going we want the rest breaks to be quite short mm-hmm. where we'll keep our temperature uh, warm and um, we'll take on some foods that we can digest easily so we're not diverting our body's resources away from uh, getting lactic acid out of the muscles and keeping us moving really um at the end um or at, at the some of the bigger rest breaks we'll take things like achieve bars that's a um, a high protein protein bar with 20 grams of carbs and 20 grams of protein in uh, rebuild strength rebuild endurance these are all like easy digestible 
products with um, the full range of protein, all the amino acids that your body needs to repair and reconstruct um, and easy access carbohydrates. Um, that's the name of the game, really. So at the beginning at breakfast time, taking those longer, more complex carbohydrates to keep us going. Um, and what we want to avoid really is the need to have to divert our body's fuel source from carbs to fat, which is a hit in the wall kind of a process yeah. that it take time away from us really and cause sufferance. Um, in the evenings, we'll probably have a big meal, something like lasagna, garlic bread, anything like that um, will be great to sort of pack in some um, nice uh, heavy carbohydrates and proteins um, just so we're overnight where we're recovering and repairing as best we can ready to go again the next day so yeah that's our journey through food and uh your um your special magic um <laughs> well are going to be part of this uh run. yeah my 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 roles that i take with <laughs> it's uh if for anyone is it is uh, a brioche bun <laughs> with peanut marmite peanut butter and strawberry jam and they're just fantastic. They, 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 they do. They work. I mean, the the John was saying then about the easy digestible stuff. It, that is so important because there's nothing worse than running with a with a, with a full stomach. You know, where your your body's digesting or it's struggling to digest something. It can make it really uncomfortable. It can slow you down. It takes your concentration away. So then you're more prone to like rolling over on your ankle or something. Um, and so, you know, and, and having like the CR7, the Prolong works for me. I mean, I have it slightly different. I think you have it in your bladder pack, don't you? Yeah, I tend to yeah. have them here, uh, one, and then have water in the back because I like the intense flavor. I don't like it. I water down, don't worry, it's fine. It works just the same. But I feel like to feel like I've got like a really intense flavor going, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, but my, 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 so we tried actually last Sunday when I went out, we tried a different variation of the bun with, Marmite peanut butter, that just sounds so disgusting. A banana and some honey. The texture was just all wrong. <laughs> it was, it, it just, it just, it just, yeah, I can't even, the look there of it. There is, a, there's an important element to this as well as kind of keeping our physiological bodies in balance. Uh, from an emotional and mental health point of view, it's important to have some food to look forward to. You know, there's, there's rest breaks where it's nice to have a millionaire slice or, mm every cup of coffee or something because it just keeps you going to know that you've got that to look forward to and this is like a relentless um endeavor one of the things that's important physically about this is that we're we're gaining the height of everest over the four days in we terms are. of um that's actually quite useful to us although we need more energy to do that um we're running at different angles all the time we're landing at different angles so we're not as relentlessly reliant on hitting the floor in the same way all the time so it makes it a little bit easier to run in this way over distance if we're doing 180 miles on the road we'd have a different challenge really because we're running yeah. the same all the time and we're hitting the floor at the same in the same way at the same angle we get a lot more joint um, discomfort and, mm. um, and pains and things so um that's uh worth bearing in mind yeah something you said actually on the test run we did oh there's a change in muscles and I've noticed that now when I'm doing it, like, oh, right, okay. Cause you can get like on a steep incline and you think, oh, blimey, this is, yeah, this hurts. And then turn the corner and have a different type of incline, use different muscles, and it doesn't hurt as much. It, yeah. it, it, it really, you know, it, it, the human body is an incredible, an incredible thing. And I think we, we take it for granted a bit much sometimes. I also want to take on some healthy fats while we're running because we, we could quite potentially lose 5% body fat during this four days. That's, uh, wouldn't be unusual. So, no. um, you know, particularly in our evening meals, we want them to be quite luxurious. Uh, plentiful. <laughs> you plentiful <laughs> sort of rest. and uh, Yeah. Right. I think I'll have to, well, we're going to lose our thing at the minute. So I'm going to, well, do this. And then I will um, call you back uh, just because what I need to do now, Peter, we need John I need to have a discussion exactly what I'm going to take with me and, and stuff and get it all ordered and things. Because, you know, it is now Friday and the run is Thursday and it has come around quick. <laughs> um but i just want to thank john for his support and all this guys i really 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 do appreciate it um and thank you to everybody else as well for all your support this has really blown up and it's really taken kelly and i by um by massive surprise and we are eternally grateful and i cannot stress that enough so uh so yeah so i'm in this now john and i'll call you back in a sec yeah. Cheers. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.